Good day guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're gonna create a whip transition using LumaFusion only. And the transition looks like this. Now I've also been extremely busy building my custom YouTube garage where it will be YouTube studio upstairs and downstairs and that's why I haven't been making so many tutorials lately but the garage is almost done now so it's time for these tutorials. Now if you have been watching these vlogs as well you should have received a comment with a bunch of free presets as well. So without further ado let's head over to the iPad so I can teach you how to make this super simple and awesome whip transition. There is going to be some free presets as well at the end of the video so stay tuned for that and with that said let's get started. So moving over to LumaFusion we have two clips here on the timeline however we only need to use one of the clips to create the transition. Later on we can import different videos and photos to the transition and we can also save this as a custom project for them to later import the transitions to our future projects. Now the first thing we need to do is to make a cut and the way that this works and the way that you can change the speed of the transition is to decide how long the duration of the clip is going to be. So the longer the duration is the slower the transition will be and the shorter the duration is the faster the transition will be. But for this case we're gonna go with a cut of 20 frames. Now after we made the cut we're gonna move straight into edit and over to frame and fit and take the playhead to the beginning. At the beginning we're gonna create our first keyframe. Now once we created our first keyframe we can start adjusting position X and the key here is to adjust it a tiny bit to begin with and as you proceed into the clip you're gonna do bigger and bigger movements. You can also follow my example to see the numbers under position X and follow along to create your own custom transition which is looking exactly like this. Now as we get to the middle of the duration of the clip you can see that the picture is now outside of the frame. Now we're gonna bring this in again so we're gonna move one keyframe forward in time and we're gonna take the image and drag all the way over to the other side to the right side and we're gonna start the movement again but this time we're gonna go the other way. So we're gonna start with some big movements and then as we get closer to the end we're gonna slow down on the movement that we do to the position X. You can also follow the example to see the number numbers and how I create this transition. Now once we're done with the keyframing we can move out to the timeline and we can play through to see how the transition looks. Now as we can see we have some black spots on the edge of the video here which we need to remove. So in order to remove this we need to make a duplicate of the exact same video. So we're gonna make a duplicate and then we're gonna go into edit and we're gonna match up and cover the black spots with this image. Now in order to do that and to make it look professional we need to mirror this image with the first one. So the way that we're gonna do that is to move over to this button, we're gonna tap on that which will turn the video the other way and we have now created a mirror effect to this image and to the transition. 
The next step is to go keyframe by keyframe and adjusting the position of the second clip and make sure that we cover up all the black spots in the image. After we've done all the adjustments, we can move over to the timeline and we can take a look at the transition again. But as you can see here at the beginning, the flipped image is still visible. So we need to go into edit and change this. So that will be the first keyframe. So what we can do is to simply just drag it outside of the frame and our transition is now complete. So now we can go over to the timeline here, scrub through to see if there is any black lines between the two images visible. And if there is not, we can do a playback to see how the transition looks. Now, once you're happy with the transition, you're going to find a point where you want the transition to actually start. For this case, that's going to be in the middle at 10 frames. And as we can see here, both of the clips uh, or all of the four clips have now 10 frames each. The next step is to go to our second clip here and make sure that we cut this in 10 frames. And then we're simply going to duplicate this as well and drag it over to the last part of the transition. Make sure that there is a yellow orange line around the entire clip before you release. Now, once you've done this, we can move into edit on the uh, different clips here and we can add some motion blur as well. And once we add in motion blur to all the clips, it will look something like this. So now that we're happy with the transition and we have motion blur added, we want to save this as a new project so we can import this to a future project and edit as well. So the way that we're going to do this is to find out what type of frame rate an aspect is this transition made with. So in this case, that is 23.98 FPS and the aspect is 16 by 9. So we're going to move over and create a new project. And these clips are also 4K. So we're going to type in 4K 23.98 custom transitions and we're going to save this project. Once the project is open, we need to go back to our project where we created the transitions and we can now multi select all of them and we can choose copy and move over to the new project and paste. Now this allows us to have a project file containing all the custom transitions that we made. Now if we want to use this for a future project, the only thing we have to do is to select the part where the transition is. So I'm going to select these four clips here and I'm going to duplicate them and then I'm going to drag them up to track five and six or any track you want. The reason I'm doing this, 
once you copy the transition, you will also copy the track the transition is on. So if you copy the transition on track one and two, you will paste them on track one and two as well, which you most likely will have other footage and other different clips and, and maybe overlays. So to be sure that I'm not cutting away any of my other video files, I'm dragging these up to track five and six. Then I'm multi-selecting all of them and choose copy from the clip. Board. Now we're going to move into a different project here and we're going to paste the uh, transitions. So in order to do that, I'm just going to trim down a little bit here and then paste the transitions and drag them over to the clips underneath and make sure that the cut of the transitions is uh, centered between two other clips as well, like you see here on the screen. Now the next step is to cut the other clips, which is on track number one and then make a duplicate. We're gonna take the duplicate and we're gonna place on the transition itself. And once this is done, it's all about placing the transition back to track number one and two. Now, once you've done this, you're basically done importing and adding a new custom transition to your timeline. Now, in some cases, you might apply your transitions where you have these slow motion clips. So in this case, we have the clips on 40%. So moving into edit here, you can actually see that the keyframes is not going all the way. So the way that you can change this is to simply go to the last keyframe and then you can make a cut and remove the last part of the video. And once you've done that, you have a smooth working transition for slow motion clips as well. Or you can make an own custom transition for slow motion clips as well and save those in a different project by following the steps on how we created this whip transition. Now, once everything is set, we can do a playback of the transition here and it looks something like this. So that's how you create a super simple and professional whip transition using nothing but LumaFusion 3.0. Now, if it was a little bit too fast for you, go back, watch it at the slower speed and then write down the numbers as well if you wanna create the exact same transition. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, there is going to be some free presets for you to download. There is a Google Drive link all the way down at the bottom of the description. Make sure while you are, you know, getting your way down there to the link, hit that subscribe button on the way and put on the notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. That would be highly appreciated. And if this is the first time that you are popping by my channel, welcome. Really nice to see you. Hope you enjoy the content and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So with that said, I have a few more adjustments and things I need to do on the garage before it's completely done. So I'm gonna go do that and uh, whilst I'm doing that you can enjoy the free presets and uh, I hope you like the content as well and I see you in the next video.